would read verse 17 downwards. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you that, that they told you there shall be mockers in the last days mm. who should walk after their own ungodly lust. But these be, verse 19, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not. of the world. The Bible says that we are not of the world. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. Therefore, we continue to separate ourselves unto God. And the only way you and I can stand among these mockers and still make it to eternal life is to continue to build our faith, build ourselves up by praying in the Holy Ghost, build yourselves up by seeking the word, build yourselves up by doing and remaining in the love of God. It is only the love of God that will keep you and I strong, will keep you and I firm, will keep you and I grounded in him. I want you to pray for yourself. I don't know where you are, but you know where you are in the Lord. Have time and seek God. Reach out to him. As a deer will pant for waters and the brooks, let your soul seek God. I want to give you time. We are in the last days. Whether we like it or yes, we are in the last days. Are we going to allow ourselves for the mockers to pull us back, those that ridicule you, those that don't want to know your Jesus, those that say that, you know what, well, it's all fantasy. We choose to remain in the light. We choose to remain in the love of God. We choose to build ourselves up and be strong and be ready for any storm that the enemy will throw at us. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. It's you and the Lord. It's you and the Lord. It's you and the Lord. You, and the Lord. you alone before the Lord. You alone before your Redeemer. Hallelujah. Lunch out. Lunch out. Cry out. Lift up your voice. The Bible says, draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. Because when you draw near, you will know that he had not moved. God had not moved at all. It was you that had moved away. Come closer. Draw near to him. Oh, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. 
Ibarabashata. It is me and you, Lord. It is me and you, Lord. Kebale ba shoto ro bo bo ro sheke tere baby. Ira la ba 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 yeri ando ro bo bo soto ro di kete ri anda. I ba 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 liende re bo soto ri anda la ba ba. Your grace, O God, that avails. Your grace that avails to me. Your grace that avails for me. Your grace that avails for me to serve you, Lord. To seek you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, and everything within me. La ba ho to shoko to ri in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus thank you father thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord the next five minutes if you can stand please stand let's pray for this ministry if you can Wherever you are, if you can stand, just stand and let's pray for this ministry. This is where we are fed. This is where God has brought us. It's part of the regiment of the living God, part of the army of the living God. But this is, this is your, your barrack. This is where you are. Let us pray. Lift this ministry before the Lord. Let's leave the vision of this ministry before the Lord. Let's pray for the leaders of this ministry. Let's pray for the families of this ministry. Every individual, every individual here in London and in Ghana, every, every branch that the Lord has established for himself, let us pray that we continue in the love of God. We continue in the unity of faith. We continue to work in the vineyard of the Lord. We will continue to answer the call we will answer the call we will answer the call we will come into partnership with the holy ghost in gathering the harvest of souls into his kingdom and touching lives and healing people that are oppressed healing people that are hurting father we thank you for this ministry we bless you for where you have planted our feet we bless you for where you have planted our heart this is where we receive father god spiritual instruction this is where we feed our spirit this is where you speak unto us we've come together as a community we've come together as a family we bless your god for the vision of this ministry we bless you father for the leaders of this ministry we thank you for the workers of this ministry we thank you for the families of this ministry every individual are young and old, every man and woman of God in that about shake it about so tori and up a mama babeka baru and dead about now baba beke terrible son not about send it he can edit about so tori and up if I call tana mama send it and that about him I'm a set area and that about send it areas where we are weak oh lord areas where we are sleeping father areas where we have less sleep by holy ghost we are asking holy ghost we are asking revive your people once again revive the source of your people revive the strength of your people revive the commitment of your people revive the loyalty of your people revive us oh god that we'll be devoted unto you and serve you father with fervency and serve you father with joy and serve you father with gladness use our life to touch many use our life to touch many use our life to heal many use our life to save many he use our life to encourage many use our life to revive many use our life to make a legacy in the name that's above every name we are asking of you oh god we are asking of you oh god let the vision be before us we pray for our bishops we pray for our pastors we pray for our deacons we pray for our deaconesses we pray for our evangelists we pray for our apostles we pray for the teachers we pray father all the ministries all the ministries all the giftings all the giftings all the graces all the talents you are have bestowed upon this ministry we thank you for them and we release and we release and we release effectual working power of God the Father God we will not sit on our callings we will not sit on our ministries but we will rise up this is the time father this is the time we don't want to be the one that was like 
I cannot do anything with this talent and therefore he buried the talent we want to be the one that is wise and put the talent to work so that Lord at the end we'll be able to account oh God for the talents and the graces and the giftings you gave unto this ministry that is us the body of Christ we are the church every individual every family every leader everyone all of us are father God useful in the hands of the Holy Ghost to touch lives in the name of Jesus father we thank you amen and amen amen and amen amen and amen father we thank you and bless your holy name we thank you for this hour we thank you for this season where we have gathered your word has declared where two or three have gathered in your name there you are in their midst so we thank you that you are here with us we you are here with us and in us so we declare holy spirit you are the one in charge as we come we take oh our place in you we salute you and we surrender lead us touch us encourage us bring warning where we need to be warned but let grace abound let mercy abound in the mighty name of jesus of nazareth we have prayed and let the church of god say amen and amen 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 amen
Romans chapter 8 verses 35 to 39 Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. There's nobody bigger, there's nobody greater. He's a great and mighty God. Can you lift those hands all over this room and let's just, let's just pour. Can we break our alabaster boxes now? Not saving anything for the next moment, but God, here I am in your presence. All that I am, all that I have is yours and we freely, we give it to you, Jesus. It's yours today, Lord. You give light, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Come on, can we cry out together? See, great are you, Lord. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, Holy. It's yours today, Jesus. Begin to pour, begin to pour all over this room. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. 
and we thank you for a time of praise. We pray that you have received our offering and that it has been a sweet smelling incense. Father God, we commit the rest of this service into your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone here physically and everyone online. So we're just going to take the announcement. So prayer times continue Monday to Friday between 1 p.m. and 1.45 p.m. You're encouraged to join as and when you can, even if you just pick one day that's suitable to you. Friday prayer times are from 8 till 9 p.m. Saturday mornings are from 8 till 9 a.m. And Sunday mornings from 8 till 8.30. The prayer line details are available. If you require them, they can be texted to you. Sunday service, doors continue to open at 10.30 and service starts at 11 o'clock. God bless you for being here. Tithes and offering. So if you would like to give physically, the basket is over there. If you would like to give online, details can be given onto you. So that's all the announcements for this week. Unfortunately, there was no one's birthday this week. So we will celebrate next week when people are celebrating their birthdays. And so with that, we'd just like to open in prayer and then invite Bishop to come and take the word. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done for us this week. That you have seen us here, Lord God, that not one of us has suffered and not one of us has, has gone without. Lord God, whatever we have, we want to give back to you. So I pray that you would bless the hands of those who give and you would also bless the hands of those who are unable to give so that they would be able to give unto you. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you would multiply everything that we've given unto you so it can be used for your kingdom. As we're in this series of making an impact, I pray that you would help us to be able to make an impact in our own unique and individual ways so that the community around us and the world at large will be made better for your glory. This we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead and give the Lord a mighty offering. Hallelujah. We can. Amen. We welcome you all in the name of Jesus. Those that are online and those that are present here face to face, worshiping with us. The Lord bless you and the Lord continue to enrich you in greater things. Amen. Over the week, uh, I had calls from individuals, from members regarding sicknesses and the enemy's attacks and different things. I want to assure you, you are more than a conqueror. Amen? As we, we sang on there, we are more than a conqueror. And however, God has also given us the ability to stand in with one another. Amen? And so I would want us, those that are here and even those that are home and wherever you are watching and being part of us, I just want us to spend a minute here and pray for them that are sick. Sometimes it's not about you yourself, but probably a relation, someone that's closer to you. And it is important that we're standing. Shall we just stand? Prayer. you to pray. Make declaration by the word of the Lord. Because the Bible says the Lord sent forth his word to heal and to deliver. The Lord sent forth a word to heal and to deliver. We are healing them that are sick by the word of the Lord. We declare healing right now. We declare healing right now. We declare healing right now. Whether it's in the mind, whether it's in the body, in the muscle, wherever it is. Whether it's COVID, whatsoever it is. Father, bring them back unto health in Jesus' name, Lord. It doesn't matter whether the human intellect and people with human knowledge have declared that this is hopeless. There is nothing that we can do. My Father, by your word, I send forth your word to anyone that is going through such a situation. Those that have been... I'm asking, Lord, that healing be their portion. What sort of a sickness that is named? Father, your word says, the name of Jesus is above every name. So therefore, whatsoever is named, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we command you to bow to the name of Jesus. And we release, we release the healing power of God. We release the healing power of God by his word right now. And we're sending for that word to heal and to deliver. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in this wonderful presence. Brethren, we want to say that over the weeks in January. So far, we've gone about, this is the third week, third Sunday. Is it? Okay. And we have been looking at making an impact. Making an impact. Because the year 2020 is a year of impact. Impactation. We are going to impact on lives. Amen. We are going to impact on lives in whatsoever way. It doesn't matter how small and it doesn't matter how big the impact is. I'll tell you what, let me use a negative one to explain that. When two things collide, it is called impact. It makes an impact. Your word, your prayer, your desires in there your declarations would make an impact on another person because that impact should be for the positive 
Amen. And we have been looking at that throughout and looking at how that the Lord is ready to use us in this making of an impact in the life of people. Remember, you are saved to make an impact. Otherwise, you, you, you will just be walking just like that. You are saved to make an impact. And as we look at it, until the rapture, until we go away somewhere to the Lord, we would have to make an impact in our time. Amen? I just want to read a song which I mentioned last week, written by a young man called John Wesley, uh, a young man called Charles Wesley. Got John Wesley was a uh, Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley was the 18th child of the Reverend Samuel Wesley and Susanna Wesley. 18th child. And he was the youngest anyway. And this is what he wrote. Said a charge to keep I have a God to glorify and never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. I'm called to serve the present age. It is the age in which you are living that you can serve. You can serve an age that is past and gone. They are gone. Amen? And the age you serve now can affect the ages to come. You don't just walk into tomorrow, you make tomorrow. You understand what I mean? You make what you want to see tomorrow. Otherwise, we all sleep and wake up and tomorrow is here. And so we just walk into it. But if we want to change tomorrow, we have to change our tomorrow today. We make an impact. Whatsoever thing you do today affects your tomorrow. Whether bad or good. And so Charles Wesley said, I want to serve this present age and fulfill my calling. My calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. I want to engage every power that is in me, every investment that is in me, everything that has been given unto me, I want to engage it to make an impact on another person's life. And I say this as a slogan, we can, we should, and we must. You must create your tomorrow. You can create your tomorrow and you should create your tomorrow. He prayed unto God and said, Arm me with jealous care. Arm me with jealous care as in thy sight to live. I want to live in your sight. So arm me with jealous care. And now thy servant, Lord, prepare a strict account to give. Because I know someday I will give an account anyway. So prepare me now. We shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we are going to give an account of whatsoever we've done in our life here. Help me to watch and pray. And still on you rely. Oh, let me not my trust betray but press to realms on high. I hope this will be your prayer. Last week we looked at being called to make an impact. Thank you. We looked at being called to make an impact. We looked at Jeremiah. Jeremiah's calling. We remember that, don't we? We looked at Jeremiah's calling and then we looked at God, we heard God saying, before I formed thee, in the womb, I knew thee. Take it to the back, reverse it. You can say, I knew you before I formed you. Which means you existed before you were formed. That's, that's God's word. 
I knew you before I formed thee. Because God knew you in his mind, in his spirit. Every part of God knew that you were coming out. I knew you before I formed you. And when I did that, I sanctified you even before you came out of your mother's womb. And I ordained you a prophet. So we actually looked at it. We looked at Isaiah calling God to say, I am here, use me. I am here, send me. We call off Esther when Mordecai sent to her. Today we want to look at acknowledging you can. You should acknowledge that you can. And in acknowledging that I can make a difference, it is important to know that God would always honor the word that you give unto him to say, I can. I can. I can. I can. And I'm willing to do that. Amen? Paul confirmed this in Ephesians in chapter number 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. Paul was saying that God has given us a mandate. God has made us. Probably as we listen, we might say that, oh, that was about Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Oh, that was about Isaiah in the Old Testament. That was about Esther in the Old Testament. What about now? Paul reminds us this, that we are God's creation. We are God's brand. We are God's workmanship that he has created in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember you that you were created in the Lord Jesus Christ that he has preordained good works that you should walk in it. And so the works were created for you before you were even born. You were even called in that. And so you know that God in Christ Jesus has set things for you to do. If you don't acknowledge that, you will not be able to achieve whatever you acknowledge for. And this same Mordecai going over to Esther to say, hey, Esther, you were called for a time such as this. You were called for a time such as this. You have given yourself fully for the queenship. You were the queen. And you have received this queenship. You have been into this palace. You have been in this position for a time such as this. Young ones and old ones. That can hear the sound of my voice. I want to let you know that it is in your time that you need to affect life positively. Because this life will soon be over. Very soon, I will need someone to help me to put on this or put on that. Or it can get to a point I may be out even of my consciousness. And someone else would have to do that for me or I might be dead and someone would have to cover me my nakedness and so it is my time now. tell yourself it's my time now amen I don't know whether you are ready for it one of the things that we find when we acknowledge that work has been called, work has been given to us, is giving excuses. We learn to give excuses so many ways. We find excuses from up, bottom, left, right, center. We find excuses for supporting another person. We find excuses for making impact in the life of another person. We find excuses, and those excuses are endless. It can be excuses for my own self. It can be excuses for the things I don't have. It can even be excuses for the things you have too many of. They take different shape and different form. I don't know about your excuse, 
But I want to go through certain things that scripture has made as know that when someone has an impact to make on another person or other things or when the church has impact to make in the community, in the world, we find excuses all the time not to do it. I have found excuses in my life for so many times. The first excuse sometimes we look at is self-inadequacies. That I'm inadequate. I can't do it because I'm inadequate. I can't do it because I have this and that and that and that. I have a personal weakness. I am inadequate. And the Jeremiah we read, let's go back to Jeremiah in chapter number one. If you look at Jeremiah chapter number one, and verse number 6. This is what Jeremiah said. When all has been given and said and ordained as God has said and equipped and called and whatever. This is the word that Jeremiah could only answer God. He said, and I said, Ah, Lord God, I cannot speak. I'm a child. Personal inadequacy. I'm inadequate. Can't you see that I'm, I'm, I'm flesh and blood? Can't you see that I'm only a woman? Can't you see that I've not even got this? I've not even got that. I'm only a child. I cannot speak. Yes, I know. I know that speech is one of the most important things that we can make impact with. But there are people who makes impact even without a word, without speaking a word. In actual fact, psychologists and those people that do researches in communication say that a higher percentage of our communication one with another is non-verbal. That I can stand here and speak with my wife but not even say a word, but she knows that I'm talking with her. You understand what I mean? We all make guesses. We all say things with that. And I believe with all my heart that we can make impact on another person. But Jeremiah is saying, I cannot speak. I'm only a child. Eloquence. If we want to find excuses, we can. The same thing Moses, when God called him, he also said, I cannot speak. Exodus chapter number 4 and verse number 10. When God had met Moses and wanted to send him to go and deliver, to go and make impact on the lives of people in bondage and in slavery. And Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. I have not learned the queen's speech. I have not learned the queen's language. I have not got that accent because everyone will know that I am a Ghanaian and I'm speaking with an accent. Everyone knows that I am a Nigerian and I'm speaking with an accent. Everyone knows that I don't have this. I'm not eloquent, God. Find someone else. But God said, it is you. It is you. It doesn't matter how much vocabulary you have or how many vocabulary you have. I know that words come together to make sentences. I know that. But God is saying that, don't say you are uneloquent. Don't say that. Don't say that you are not eloquent. The same thing Isaiah said. Isaiah said, I cannot speak. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 5. I cannot speak. I cannot speak. Why are we making such excuses? Why are we making such an excuse? So we go to the basic thing, which is one of the most important to say, we cannot do it. So God, excuse me. Excuse me. What is your excuse? I'm not, I'm not the pastor. Look, I cannot speak like Bishop Jeremy. I cannot do this like this person. I cannot sing like that person. I cannot do this like that. Lord, excuse me. Let someone else do it. We're making an impact 
whether we give an excuse or we don't give an excuse Lord you don't know me have you gone back to my village I have the worst record ever you, you, you don't know when I stand here and people see me they will say hey is that him also is Saul also among the prophets so God excuse me personal inadequacies let us move on to Exodus and chapter number 3 verse number 11 when you look at your personal inadequacies it, come, it brings some incompetence to you now I see that I cannot speak and God said who made the, the person to speak who gave mouth I am going to give you a mouth I am going to ask someone to do this and do that and do that and then you look at it and said what excuse can I have again God I am not competent enough not eloquent but I'm not competent and so Moses said God who am I who am I to stand before Pharaoh? Who am I to go to Pharaoh? It's not about speech. Now it's about competence. Am I competent enough? Do I have enough money to make an impact on this person's life? Am I schooled enough to be able to search the scriptures and say something? Do I have the fullness of the Holy Ghost to stand and lead prayer meeting? Do I have this? Do I have that? Now it's about my competence. And he said, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring your people out of Egypt? Who am I? Who am I? Have you ever asked that question when God asks you to have an impact? Sometimes it doesn't take having been to university. It doesn't take that. It doesn't take your stature. I'm tall. I'm seven foot. I'm, 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 I'm built. I have muscle and I can stand here and then you see a giant. No. You can go before Pharaoh just as this. Amen. Personal incompetence. You know, when God wanted to use Israel in this way, God sent through Moses, he sent 12 to go and spy the land of Canaan. You remember that? And they went and spied the land. They even brought the, the, the fruit of the land to show them that it was so good. And in Numbers and chapter number 13, this is what the people that came back when they came back. Look at verse number 33. Numbers 13, 33. I'm talking about incompetence. Incompetence. He said, the land that we went to spy, if you read earlier, he said the land that we went to spy is a really good land. Hallelujah. When I look at reaching this person and they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ or even support them to, to, to build up or to do something even in their social life, not even the spiritual life, in their social life, I see that something great can be achieved. But, he said the land was good. It flows with milk and honey. It flows with everything good. But he said, and there in that place we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. I'm talking about competency. I was not competent enough to even fight them. I was like a grasshopper. And he said, and so were we in their sight. If you want and see yourself as a grasshopper, so would the other person see you anyway. Because that's how you see yourself. How you sell yourself is what you will, they will buy you for. And so God is telling us today that there are excuses we give 
let us not see those inadequacies, those incompetence, those, those things that yet to be said. But let us see the hand of God upon our lives. Hallelujah. Because when that happened, we had, we, we had Joshua and Caleb tearing, I mean, renting their clothes and saying, no, let's not say that. If God loves us and God likes us, he will give us that land. Those Anaks, those sons of Anak and giants, they are our food. Church, what I'm saying here is that it doesn't matter what is in there. If God has called you to make an impact in that life, God will equip you to do that. God will equip you to do that. Sometimes we use our social status to give an excuse. We use our social status. Oh, I'm not in this class. I'm not in that class. If you look at Judges and chapter number six, this young man did the same. There was a young man called Gideon. And God has seen the need to deliver Israel. And God was looking for someone to do this work. And God found Gideon. At that time, Midian has always subdued Israel. And because of the Midianites, you find that Israel was even hiding in their caves. And an angel appeared to Gideon and said, Oh Gideon, thou man of valor, the Lord is with you. Then Gideon said, Hold, 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 hold on, hold on here. If God is with me, how come this is happening? Don't call me man of valor. Don't call me a man that can take and make an impact on another person. No. If God is with us, why are these things happening? And then he went on and went on and, and then the, the, the Lord said, it is you I'm going to use to destroy Midian as one person. And look at Gideon's answer. Are you in verse number 33? And Gideon said, Judges and chapter... Sorry, Judges and chapter number 6 verse 15, I'm sorry. Judges 6 verse 15. And this is what Gideon said. And Gideon said, Oh my Lord, where shall I save Israel? Where, where, where the strength is? I don't have the strength to, to, to save Israel. Look, if you don't know me, God, let me tell you my story. My family is the poorest family in Manasseh. My family is the lowest ranking. If you don't know, let me ask you, doesn't God know your story? Hello? Come on, speak back to me. He does. God knows your story. He knows where you come from. He knows that village where you don't even want to associate with. Because you might come from a very remote village somewhere. And when they ask you, where do you come from? He said, I come from a Buri. Meanwhile, you come from a Buri's village, village, village. Where do you come from? I come from Accra. Probably you come from Accra, 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 down, down, down. You don't want people to know. And so you are telling God, God, I don't think you know me properly. I'm not of a social standard. That you should send me to do this job. I'm not of a social standard that you should ask me to go and minister to this person. Or counsel this person. Or even pray for this person. He said, my father, my family is the poorest in Manasseh. Apart from that, if you really want to know what Manasseh is, then you can say, I am the least in my father's house. When you go to my father's house, I even don't have a status there. My family is the poorest. My family don't matter. 
And I want to let you know, God, because of this and because of that, I cannot make an impact. Are you following me, church? I'm saying all this because I don't know which one you have always been using. I don't know. Sometimes we use the difficulty of the task, the difficulty of the undertaking, the things that need to be done. You look at it and say, hey, am I the one going to move this mountain? <laughs> then I'm gone. It's not I. I cannot do it. Sometimes we look at the difficulty of the task. We look at the, the protocols, the things we will, we will break through before we reach that area to actually do that work. And he said, no, 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 no. This is too difficult. Esther did the same. Esther did the same. Yet there was support. Look at Esther chapter number 4 and from verse number 10. In Esther chapter 4, we find Mordecai sending messages through her attack unto Esther. And then Esther sending here. And Mordecai was saying, hey, Esther, you can go before the king and talk to the king. But because the task was so difficult to do, this is what Esther said. Esther said, hey, 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 hey. Go back and tell Mordecai this way. Verse number 11. He said, I want you to know that it is important that all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know one thing. That whosoever, whether it's in the inner court or the outer court, whosoever, man or woman, that shall come into the king, into his inner court, that the king has not called. Have you seen that? He said, I can only go if the king has called you. So the task is difficult. What you are asking me to do is difficult. This person you are asking me to, to support and provide, they already have what it takes to do. It is so difficult. This person has a special social standard which we have talked about. It is too difficult. It is too difficult to break the protocol, to break the, the, the security that surrounds this person. And you are asking me, a mean person, to go do it. So Esther said, look, Mordecai, listen. Everybody in this province know that until the king calls you, you cannot go to his presence. There is one law and that's the law of death. That whosoever goes before the king and that the king has not called, law of death is what applies. So, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called, oh, I've not been called to come to the king these 30 days. It's not my time yet to go there. And that is where Mordecai sent word again to tell her that don't think that you would escape. For who knows in a time such as this? He said, think not that self that you're going to escape. What did, Mordecai, what, what, what did Esther use? Esther used the difficulty of the task. Hey, you are asking me to go and pray for this person and, and see healing. You, you know how long this person has been unwell? Huh. <laughs> no, not me. You know, you, know, you know the intensity of that sickness. If it was just headache, then I can say, hey, you ask for headache, it can go quickly. And no, you don't know the demon behind the headache. You know someone that has suffered headache, migraines for years. You don't know. You are only seeing what is there. The difficulty of the task. The king has not called me. And so I cannot do 
that work. I'm talking about excuses that we give for the work that we have been called to do. Go with me again to Nehemiah in chapter number four. Nehemiah in chapter number four. In Nehemiah chapter four, God had called Nehemiah to build the walls of Jerusalem which had been broken and the, and the, and the beams bent. And the people that went with him, the, 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 the families that went with him were working and singing. But there was something that was said there that I want to bring out regarding the difficulty of the work. When he has asked that some work be done, in verse number 10, this is what we see from someone and a, a team who called Judah. When Mordecai has asked, sorry, when, when Nehemiah has asked for that work to be done, this is what Judah said. And Judah said, the tribe of Judah, the people of Judah, at least they had a spokesperson. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed. Those that are working to do the work, their strength is diminished. Their strength is gone. They have no more strength. They are too tired. Haven't you ever said you are too tired to even wake up and pray? Haven't you said that before? Instead of setting an alarm to wake up and do what you have to do, you are, you are saying, oh, come on, I'm too tired. But God might have called you to pray for that person. God might have called you to do this work, but it, it will only take. He said the people, their strength have decayed. We have burdened them too much. And even apart from that, apart from the fact that the burden, the, 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 the strength is decayed, there's another thing. There's too much rubbish. <laughs> there's too much rubbish to clear before you reach that place. It said, and there is too much rubbish, so we are not able to build the wall. What has the rubbish got to do with building the wall? Nothing. Only an excuse. It's only an excuse. Look into your life. Are there anything that are, that are piled up like a rubbish? And you look at it and it scares you to go forward. Is there anything that you have put as, as, as a barrier that stops you from reaching out the goal that God has called you? Today, I'm speaking with you. Those things are not reasons. They are only excuses. The only excuse is because God has brought remedy for that. God has brought answers for that. God has brought these things there. And Judah said, God has asked you to do this. Oh, Bishop, you know this church hasn't got money. And why are we doing this one? Uh -uh. If God said it, give money and let's do it. Get me? The church has no money. It's an excuse. God has called you to give your money. The reason why the church doesn't have money is that you don't give. But God has blessed you with it. Look, if people in here would even say, every month I will give five pounds to Glorious Inheritance which as a partner, we then can budget ahead and say, oh, we have five pounds coming from this person. We can reach out to this group. No matter how small, no matter how little. Let us not see the task as too much. Because probably God wants us to do too little. Just some small thing. Oh, we don't have a church building. Which I always say. It's an excuse. The Lord rebuked me last Friday through a young lady. And said, why do you always say we, we don't have a church building? There's so much we can do without a church building. You have a home. If you don't have a church building, we can do it in our home. In your home. You understand that? Amen? There's something we can do. And I learned from that. I learned from that. That, that, that statement woke me up. It actually stirred me. Just like Judah said, there's too much rubbish. The people's strength are gone. The people's strength are gone. Church, let us change our mind. 
and acknowledge what the Lord has done. Some people use the hardness of the master. That your master is just too hard. Your master is just too strict. You cannot please God. Whatever you do, God is not pleased with it. So just, just, just stay somewhere and do whatever you want. You know, this happened in, in Matthew and chapter number 25. In Matthew 25, if you read from verse number 24, God, I mean, God gave talents. Ten talents to one, five talents to another, and then one talent to, 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 to another. And what happened was that when they came in to give the account, the one with one talent said something. He said, then he that had received the one talent came and said, look, master, Lord, listen to me. I knew you, that you are a very hard man. <laughs> Have you seen that? I know you. You are a very hard man. You are a very strict man. You are a very harsh man. You always want profit. You, you are a very harsh man. And because if even this one talent, if I lose it, you are actually going to deal with me drastically. When I was in primary school, I always heard my head teacher say this. I will deal with you drastically. Hey! And so everyone feared the head, head, head teacher. The very woman he comes to assembly and says, I will deal with you drastically. We didn't understand the word drastically, but the sound of it even put fear. <laughs> the sound of it, the, the word drastically, the sound of it even put fear in us. He put fear in us. said, you master, I have seen that you are too hard. And because of that, I was afraid. I was afraid. And because of that, I just went and hid your talent. The talent you gave me, I hid it. Church, don't hide your talent. For the master is only waiting to give you a push to doing what? He's waiting for you to make a move, to just take the first step. When the Israelites saw the Red Sea there, all it took for them to take a step. He said, don't look at the Red Sea. Moses, tell the people forward march. Move forward. It doesn't matter whether the Red Sea is there. He said, and I was afraid and I hid your talent. Here is your talent. Take it. Hardness of the master. Sometimes we want to see the need before we move forward. Is there a need to do this? Sometimes God will not tell you the need, but God will tell you what he wants you to do. And when it comes in there, do it. Matthew 25. I say Matthew 25. We are. Look at verse number 44. Jesus told, told them another parable. And then he said, Oh, look, some of you are not doing this, some of you are not doing that. But there's coming a time when I will gather you and say, Look, when I was sick, you did not find me. You did not even heal me, pray for me. When I was in prison, you did not even visit me to encourage me. When I was hungry, you did not feed me. It only takes about five pounds to feed someone. Isn't that true? Hello? Isn't that true? Five pounds. Those of you who go to McDonald's, unless you want Big Mac, Big This, Big That, Big That, then it, it, it makes a dent into your pocket. I don't usually get there. But it... Your five pounds can, can, can feed a homeless person. If ten of us will say we give five pounds, five, five, we can actually support the crisis home. You know, they, they do crisis home, whatever, during Christmas. We do that. We can sponsor. We need to do our charitable work. So let us know. Don't see the need first. Some of us want to see the need before we do the work. Let's do the work and it will accomplish the need. Amen? So verse 44 says this, Then shall 
the master answer and say, Lord, I mean, the, the, the servant will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you and see you that you were hungry and we didn't feed you or you were thirsty and we didn't give you any drink or you were a stranger and we didn't take you to our home or you were naked and we didn't do this, you were sick and we didn't do that or you were in prison and we didn't minister to you. I want to see the need. And Jesus said, because you didn't do to those little ones. He answered saying, very I say unto you, inasmuch as you did not do this unto the least, you did not do it for me. You didn't. You didn't. As I bring my sermon to a close and my teaching to a close today, I want to bring your attention to Luke and chapter number 14. Luke 14. In Luke 14, we find the master sending his servant to go and call people in. And all that he wanted them to do was just to come for a party, a banquet, and eat and fill the room for the conference. And what he did was, when he has sent them, his servant, to go and speak to other people, because of the pressures of their business, they gave an excuse. Sometimes, because of the pressure of your own business, you give excuses. Because of the pressure of the things you've engaged yourself in, you give excuses. Verse 18 said, Luke chapter 14 and verse number 18 said, and they all, the people that were, that the servants went to, they all with one accord, with one consent, one consent in agreement of what was in their mind, they were not together probably, began to make excuses. The first one said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must need to go and see it. Who is it that buys a piece of ground before he goes to see it? You see the land and then you buy it. Is that not what it is? Yes. He said, just excuse me, I have a business to do. If we got our businesses to actually obscure what God wants us to make an impact on another person, we will not do it. We will not do it. I've got a business to do. I bought a new land, a ground, and I want to go and see it. And then another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. Five yoke of oxen in that time, even one oxen, one ox, was a, you were a rich man. And this rich man has bought five of them. And he said, I bought five yokes of oxen and I want to go and try them. You buy them before you try them? Uncle Godfrey, when you want to buy a second-hand car, a used car, don't you go and see it, try it before you buy it? You don't buy it before you try it. It's an excuse. It's only an excuse. Church, we give excuses as individuals. If you are listening to me uh, uh, in, in the comfort of your home, don't give excuses for anything that God has called you to do. And then another one said, oh, it's not just about ground or land and then about... Uh, about oxen. I've married a new wife. <laughs> I've married a new wife so I cannot come. When you wanted your wife, you were pestering the pastor, pray for me. Pray, I want a wife. Oh, the woman, pray, I want a husband. And then, oh, God, those that are single, we pray for the single ones. Oh, let them be found. Meet them, Lord. Be and now you marry a new wife. God is calling you for something. He said, I've married a new wife, so excuse me. Excuse me. 
When they want the wife and they want the husband, they are sitting right in the front pews. So that the pastor would have the revelation and say, you, your wife is in China. And when they get married, gradually they move back. The first Sunday, after they come for Thanksgiving after the wedding, they sit back a little bit. Then the third Sunday, they sit back. Then they sit back. Then they sit back and they find the exit. You never see them again. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. The last thing I want to say is that sometimes because of our own vengeance, we want to take, we make no impact on another person. Either we are envious or we are jealous of whatever is going on in their lives. Do you remember Jonah? Jonah. In Jonah chapter number, chapter number 4, we find that from, the, from chapter number 1, God had asked Jonah to go to this Nineveh and then actually preach unto them for repentance. And Jonah wanted to go to a place where he ran away from what God has called him to do. And so he joined a ship that was going to Tarsus. And things that came on, I don't want to, you know the story. But look at chapter 4 and verse number 1. When Jonah was vomited out of the belly of the whale, and he was there, and he went to speak the gospel. Listen to this. But it displeased Jonah. In chapter, in chapter number 3, getting to the end, the Bible says that the people repented. They even fasted and, and, and prayed to God for, 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 for forgiveness of sin. Nenevi was a very wicked city. If you read the history of it, it's terrible. He didn't want to go in there. But when he went and he spoke, he wanted God to punish them. Sometimes our desire is that God punish them. Don't send me to go and preach to them. Just punish them. They are wicked. So you see, the Bible says when God forgave them and had mercy, it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. Who are you angry with? Angry with God? Or angry that the people have repented? I'll tell you what, when you make an impact in the life of a, of, of a person, Pray that they excel more than you do. Just pray that they will excel. They will do greater things. Because Jesus said that to his disciples. He said, the works that I do, you will even do more. Greater things. I want my children to excel more than I, I have excelled. I've not reached anywhere. I want them to go higher and higher. I want, I want spiritual children to do exploits. But Jonah said, I know that you would forgive them. Verse 2. What does verse 2 say? And he prayed unto God and said, I pray thee, O God, was not this my saying when I was yet in the country? Therefore I fled before you unto Tarsus. For I knew that thou gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and great of kindness and repentest thee of the evil. He said, as for you God, I know when I go and speak them and they repent, you forgive them. I don't want them to be forgiven. So I won't go. Are you with me so far? This same thing happened to Elijah. When Elijah feared for his life, sat down under the juniper tree and he was just furious because the tree had vanished over and God said did you create that tree if you didn't then get up and go and do what I'm asking you to do would we say yes to God we can would you say yes to God I can amen so look at the list there what are some of the excuses? One, personal inadequacy. Two, personal incompetence. Three, social status. Four, difficulty of the task. Five, hardness of the master. Six, seeing the need. Seven, precious life. 
and eight, personal vengeance. I wish someday God will send you to your, your vilest enemy, the one you actually don't like. Not they don't like you. You don't like them. And God is saying, go to them and speak to them. Do you want us to pray now? I want you to pray and you see your own excuses that you give. It can be all of them, you know. Or it can be just one. I'm not saying if it's just one, you are better than someone who has all. There was once a man who called his two sons and sent them and said, I'm sending you. One said, I would not go. And later, he went and did the task. There was one who said, I will go. And he didn't go. And the question was that, who did the will of the Father? Just pray that our God will help you to acknowledge that you are called to make an impact. And so I can. Acknowledging I can. Let us be still and silent before the Father. You work your way with him. Ask him for forgiveness and ask him that you are here. Can, Lord, I'm here. You can use me. For I was made for a time such as this. A time when the world is being turned right side need to turn it right side up now where it should be your community your home your church where you belong you have an impact to make Hug the voice of Jesus crying who will go and work today. Fields are white and harvest waiting who will bear the sheaves away. Loud and strong the master calls. Rich reward he offers who would answer and say here I am. Send me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. You can tell the love of Jesus and you can say he died for you. Father, continue to equip us. Bring us to a level where we can say we can. When that time comes, Lord, send us out because we should. I pray for those, Father, that have heard me. And I pray for myself too that I will be obedient to your call and to your sending. What sort of a circumstance of life, Father, make us one that will obey you. Put us together as a church, as a body, as one. And we would make impact in the lives of many. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, let us receive. Amen.
Let us receive the benediction. Unto him who has called us and washed us from our sin and has given us to be ambassadors for Christ. Unto him who has preordained work for us to walk in in this our time. Unto him be power, dominion, glory that he will continually send us so we see ourselves as in him God bringing the world back unto himself. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit and to us his people grace and peace be multiplied that we can achieve and attain what he has called us. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and make peace abound available for you. In Jesus' name this is pronounced. Amen.